I'd argue that this has been one of my most successful shit posts ever. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, A, you should. B, you probably need some background to understand the context of this video. Recently, I've garnered some attention over a statement I made on Twitter. That statement being, I might be a fascist. The statement originally was intended to be a sort of parody over a statement made by Milo Yiannopoulos in late 2015 where he said, I think I might be a narco-capitalist. I think literally only like two people picked up on that, but you know, it's whatever, right? The point is, it was a shit post. But that didn't stop a lot of people from taking it very, very seriously. In addition to the usual anti-anti-SJW crowd, this also included quite a few left libertarians who took it upon themselves to start writing my professional associates, warning them that, you know, you may have a fascist in your midst. Thankfully, none of my associates were silly enough to take it seriously in the first place, but as a courtesy to the artists, I figured I'd give them some peace of mind. So I quoted my original tweet with, just to clarify, I'm not actually a fascist, just a very principled libertarian who's ready to start winning. Fascies are friends. I assumed the wording of that sentence, you know, including the term fascies, would make it pretty obvious that, you know, I might be fucking around. But no, in fact, it made people even more confident in their assumptions that I was a closet fascist. So much so that I even garnered the attention of TJ Kirk, the amazing atheist, who made a video responding to my tweets. Sexual degeneracy, ooh. <laughs> we'll take a look at that a little later. But since everyone decided to take this so seriously, I figured I'd, you know, try and rationalize the position of libertarian fascism. Yeah, it may be silly and the lay intellectuals get to say, oh, you're so stupid, you even know what fascism is, Ugh, read a book. But honestly, who cares? You know, the discussion is fun and interesting, you know, at least to me. I never understood why people limit philosophical thought to studying and preserving old established historical concepts when it's so much fun to theorize new ones. Personally, I think it's because people care more about appearing book smart in front of their peers versus, you know, engaging and thinking about ideas. But, you know, that's an aside. Let's see where this thought experiment takes us. So, libertarian fascism, also known as anarcho-fascism or alt-capitalism, is a concept philosophy that's been around for a few years. The primary reason for this ideology's existence is to direct a defensible and sustainable libertarian framework. Libertarian being defined as a means of avoiding or resolving conflict over scarce resources, not socially liberal, physically conservative, you know, marriage equality, 420 blaze it bro. Things such as private property norms, free association and disassociation, limited commons, self-defense, which doesn't exclude collective defense. Uh, and many other things, including the invaluable yet massively abused principle of individualism, which we'll get to later in the video. These libertarian means, however, also happen to be exploitable by right authoritarians. Now, I know what you're thinking. T, what are you, what are you talking about, dude? Libertarian, authoritarian, they're antonyms, bro. I mean, have you ever even taken a political compass test? I get it. And you're right. Largely, authoritarianism is in direct contradiction to libertarian principles, with a few nuanced exceptions, such as, you know, sovereign property management and physical removal of non-compliant parties. You know, trespassers, murderers, rapists, assertive communists, uh, Islamists, and even some fascists. So you're probably wondering how an alliance between fascists and libertarians would be possible, or even considerable. The answer lies in the commonalities that libertarians share with fascists. These commonalities are not in methodology. So save your breath if you're going to try and attribute guilt for Hitler's Holocaust or Mussolini's Italian Libya. I'm not suggesting that we relaunch another failed sociopathic attempt at ethnic cleansing. So that argument is not an argument. The commonalities that I refer to are social demands that can be peacefully achieved through private property norms. Things like ethnic homogeneity or separatism within world borders, which can be achieved through sovereign property management, including economic and social incentive structures. Hierarchical leadership, which coincides with the anarcho-capitalist notion of voluntary hierarchy. Nationhood, you know, not to be confused with nation state, which is only secure through self-ownership and desirable associations, but, you know, basically unmolested identity. These cultural market demands, you know, whether you agree with them or not, do not inherently contradict private property norms. However, the demands of philosophical leftism do directly contradict these norms. 
This is another commonality that libertarians and fascists share in opposition to Marxism. Concepts like egalitarianism, hyper-inclusivity, deducted hierarchy, involuntary collectivism, socialized liberal commons, these things are incompatible with private property norms. Egalitarianism destroys organic competition and congregation. Hyper-inclusivity abolishes separatism and breeds tribal warfare. You know, things like multiculturalism. Socialized liberal commons, I think it's self-explanatory. I mean, do we really desire expanded universal ownership over scarce resources? The greatest threat to liberty, and in turn, a peaceful coexistence and limitation of suffering among individuals worldwide is leftism. There's a reason why late libertarian philosophers like Ludwig von Mises, someone who escaped ethnic persecution in Nazi Germany, yielded credit to fascism for saving Europe. Why the late Frederick Hayek complimented the Pinochet dictatorship, with disapproval of course of his totalitarian brutality, for its dedication to securing a liberal market order and defending his citizens from the plague of socialism. Now I know a lot of you are probably wondering to yourselves, okay T, you're talking all this big game about you know social demands and things like that, but what about the economics front? Well, it's no secret that fascists generally, you know, historically aren't big fans of free market capitalism. Um, and, you know, to be honest, it's something that they would have to, in a sense, get over if considering an alliance to peacefully resolve our conflicts. I mean, you know, it's just not a lengthy debate worth having. You can't fight against the social indoctrinations of Marxism while advocating its economics, because economics are the driving influence of human action. Just leave it at that. So that summarizes the first argument for libertarian fascism, a common opposition against the left. The second trait is the social responsibility required for maintaining a libertarian social order. Now, most of the normies will tell you that libertarianism is made possible by, you know, just leaving people alone, you know, just pursuing your own self-interest, non-aggression, you know, minding your own business, basically just a live and let live attitude. This is a very juvenile and simplistic understanding of what it takes to create a libertarian society. And you know, by all admittance, I used to hold this position as well. And to tackle this point, let's take a look at TJ's video, which is an impressive demonstration of a truly basic bitch comprehension of libertarianism. All right, so I don't have a whole lot of time to make this video, but I don't really need a whole lot of time to make this video either. Let's just get right into it. Uh, that Guy T, who I guess is a popular YouTuber, got about 100,000 subscribers, uh, said some interesting shit on his Twitter recently. Uh, I don't know what tweet he's responding to here, but uh, he says, just to clarify, I'm not actually a fascist, just a very principled libertarian who's ready to start winning. Fascies are friends. Uh, okay, well, let's delve a little deeper into that. Fascism doesn't mean racism either. Google is a touchscreen swipe in reach, friend. Was Hitler a fascist in your view? Possibly, it could be construed that he held fascist tendencies, but not a strong correlation, I would say. There was no necessity to ally with communists, and it's not necessary to ally with fascists, but it is a strategy I'm willing to consider. I'm saying again, the focus should be on defeating the left. Okay, then. Um, cue the clip. Uh-oh, retard alert! Retard alert, everybody. Retard fucking alert. Okie dokie. Um, you know, guess, <laughs> cue the clip again. Um, not an argument. It's not an argument. It's not an argument. This guy is going around saying, I'm a very principled libertarian and I'm considering allying myself with fascists because the most important thing is defeating the left. So, first of all, libertarianism means we want to maximize personal liberty. We want people to have as much freedom as is possible for society to still function. Let's assume, for the sake of time, that this is a fair representation of the libertarian position. How does my focus on eliminating leftism contradict that stated mission of extreme liberty? Hint, it doesn't. You know, uh, we think that you know people shouldn't need a permit to go do this or that. We think that people should be able to do whatever the fuck they want, basically. 
People should have maximum personal freedom. Again, simplistic as fuck. Libertarianism is not against permits or licensing or rules or regulations. Libertarianism is specifically against these things being centralized via violent monopoly and enforced onto non-consenting parties, especially through negation of sovereign private property rights. You know, because that incites conflict and libertarianism is about reducing conflict. You know, if you need a refresher on that, just go watch the beginning of this video. Fascism means the opposite of that. That means we want rigid state control of every aspect of a person's life possible. We don't believe in personal freedom. We think personal freedom is fucking stupid. Not quite. Granted, I'm not very well versed in the historical complexities of fascism, so if I make a mistake, feel free to correct me. But to my understanding, fascism, at least as in wartime, arose as a response to a collective market demand for military involvement. And the state was used as a tool of influence towards a common goal of promoting status militarism. This included authoritarian social conditioning, market controls, and violence against dissidents. However, the means of using a tool to influence a common goal isn't synonymous with authoritarianism. A libertarian fascist society could very well use the tool of private property to influence a common goal of promoting capitalism and cultural preservation. Dissenters or threats to this common goal could be extinguished through economic disincentives or disassociation. It's kind of like saying the redistribution of wealth to help the poor necessitates communism, which is nonsense because we have this little thing called charity and trade. To put it more clearly, if the means equal the redistribution of wealth and the goal equal, you know, helping the poor, authoritarianism isn't necessary to initiate those means to attain the goal. Now, I'm sure some of you may be wondering if that's an argument for communism being just as capable of voluntarism as fascism. Unfortunately not. I don't want to spend too much time on this. So basically, both communism and fascism as political ideologies arise to service a demand. The demand of communism is inherently authoritarian whereas the demands of fascism are preferably authoritarian. But let's move on. These two ideologies, if you did a Venn diagram of all they had in common, those two circles would be about 12 million miles apart. I debunked this earlier when I laid out the commonalities between fascism and libertarianism. There's no fucking intersection there. But it's okay, because the most important thing is defeating the left. Even though I'm a very principled libertarian who very strongly believes in personal freedom, I'm willing to put that aside as long as we can defeat the fucking left. <laughs> no, TJ, it's not me putting freedom aside. You know, it's not like I'm just kicking principles to the curb. I'm evaluating my principles, propositioning all those who I suspect could find agreement in those principles and attempting to formulate a sort of temporary mutually beneficial coalition. It's not hypocrisy, it's not dog whistling or subversion, it's strategy. As if any political fucking ideology has ever been defeated. As if there's ever been a point where someone's like, you know what, uh, liberalism, I've been a liberal uh, for a while now. And uh, I'm just quitting. And not only that person doing it, but the entirety of all liberals just say, you know what? Nah, we were wrong. You guys were right. Libertarianism uh, slash fascism. That's the true way to go. We need to all join together as libertarian fascists. What? Now, see, this is the cutest thing I've ever fucking seen. TJ thinks that we're trying to convince leftists to stop being leftists. <laughs> oh my God, aren't you in for a surprise? No, TJ, the left has made it very clear that there is no convincing them through argumentation. You guys are not willing to engage in negotiating conflict resolutions. This has been proven through the less brutal and feral demonstrations against free speech and civil discourse on college campuses, in addition to their ability abundance of dishonesty and corruption in media and other, you know, 
platforms where you would expect one to discuss these ideas. Leftists have unfortunately made it very clear that there are no more arguments to be made, that they will continue to push for more state infringements on our liberties, that they will continue to burden our children with more and more debt, that they will continue to push for social demonization of our views. This isn't about convincing the left to change their ways anymore, okay? We are well beyond the point of pues no steppy, all right? This is about unifying a populist right-wing majority against you so that you and your political representatives and your corporate and academic institutions will be subjugated to the survival of Western civilization whether you like it or not. And if you refuse to peacefully enter the realm of enlightenment, rationality, and non-aggression, well then we get into the beautiful theory of hoppy and physical removal. The greatest lie that leftists ever sold free societies is the idea that democracy is a legitimate and effective means of peaceful conflict resolution among conflicting ideologies, when in reality, it's simply an excuse to justify what tyrants of the past could not. That's not a thing, you fucking retard! There is no libertarian fascism! Not yet, but we are crowdfunding for helicopters. You might as well be a Jewish Nazi. You might as well be Donald Trump when he recently said, I'm both a nationalist and a globalist. No, you're not, retard. You can't be both those fucking things. Some things are just mutually fucking exclusive. Like, you can't be like, I'm a rapist, but I'm also a really good person. No, no, you have to choose, bitch. Funny, I would say the same thing about Marxists. Now, the rest of this video is just TJ yelling spastically to maintain the attention of his 12-year-old audience. But he makes one more point that I think serves as a good introduction to my final argument for libertarian fascism. That being the topic of individualism. The uh, Weimar Republic was, uh, was what Germany was prior to uh, the Nazi takeover. And who slapped the Weimar era with the, the label of degeneracy? It was the fucking Nazis. They didn't like the art that was being created at that time. Uh, they didn't, they, they thought like, ooh, cubism, oh shit. S scary, this could be the end of fucking society if we let people do fucking cubism and da-da and shit. And they also didn't like that people were fucking. They didn't like all the sexual degeneracy. Ooh, sexual degeneracy. Oh, it's so scary. You think a libertarian would be all for sexual degeneracy. You think a libertarian would be like, yes, yeah, stick your dick in whatever you want as long as it's adult and consenting. You're right, TJ. This would be the assumed libertarian position on sexual promiscuity, particularly thanks to the libertine degenerates, you know, masquerading as left libertarians or market anarchists. If you ask the Kathy Reisenwitz corner of the movement, eliminating the social stigma surrounding condomless polyamory is more important than taxation. Feminist sexual liberation has coincided with, if not directly caused, quite a few negative cultural phenomena. Uh, many of which are toxic to society. Things like single motherhood, the destruction of nuclear family structures, you know, leading to increased welfare statism, high STD rates, demonization of sexual responsibility, etc. The notion that sexual liberation should face no criticism from libertarians because it's voluntary is both mainstream and pathetic. Granted, it obviously should be met with aggression. You know, I'm not arguing to brand thoughts in the public square with hot iron. But this type of pacifist individualism that's been adopted by libertarians and many other people is a complete bastardization of the principle. Individualism is invaluable and the agency of the individual should be respected. But respect isn't synonymous with you know, silence or non-intervention. One positive trait of fascism that I think libertarians lack is a sense of loyalty or civic responsibility to creating a better society to preserve or improve the future through virtue. Many libertarians have you know, completely abandoned this in exchange for a sort of nihilistic egocentrism. You know, they've been made to believe that the only virtue that they should offer to society is tolerance. This is a very common trend among libertarian youth, specifically in America. 
it's literally become a libertine movement using libertarianism as a shield against social ostracization. If the only wisdom or intellectual gift that you feel motivated or permitted to contribute to the world is liberty, then you're kind of admitting that you don't care about the world. I know that may sound shocking to hear coming from a very principled libertarian, you know, a fucking ANCAP, but think about it. The future of your civilization is dependent on the fundamental ideas and morals that you preserve. You know, like the survival of a nation rests in the will of its citizens, not only in what you preach, but also what you practice. If you wanna be healthy or want others to be healthy, you're gonna to have to do more than simply say, eat whatever you want, just don't violate the net, bro. It takes work, it takes discipline, but most of all, it takes resilience and determination, you know, a passion for greatness. To put this into perspective, you know, think of society as if it were your daughter. You have the capacity and burden to raise this child, to instill in them the necessary virtues to carry on your legacy, to make the world into something that your grandchildren and your grandchildren's grandchildren will love. Are you telling me that the only virtue you would instill in your daughter is freedom? What kind of parent would you be if the only intellectual investment that you made into the continuation of human consciousness was freedom? Well, sweetie, if you wanna smoke meth, you know, smoke meth. If you wanna drink bacon grease, drink bacon grease. If you wanna adopt and promote, you know, a self-destructive philosophy that has contributed to the suffering of hundreds of millions throughout history, Hey, you know, it's just free speech, man. Just, just, just be free. <laughs> Ask yourself, do you think that your child would be equipped to survive? Do you think that you would have done everything in your capacity to ensure the survival of this concept of liberty that you love so much? Is freedom honestly the only thing that you would want for your daughter? Are you telling me that you hold no preference between this and this so long as she's free? We as individuals have a destined obligation to construct the society that we want. To deny that obligation is simply cowardice. If you're not willing to criticize bad actions and openly promote what is necessary for the survival of the people whom are expected to carry the torch of liberalism into the future, do you even care about the survival of the idea in the first place? If you have no interest in the well-being or prosperity of the demographic or social order that maintains freedom, how am I supposed to believe that you value freedom at all? Demographics matter, and I'm not going all 1488 on you. I don't believe that you know only 1% pure Bavarian phenotypes are capable of cherishing these principles and that all other participants in this triathlon we call human existence are doomed to eternal moral inferiority and savagery. I believe that a society that values freedom should serve as a bastion for the rest of the world. I don't believe that people should be condemned to isolation simply because of their ancestry. But I also believe that a free society is easily abused and that in order to preserve the social order, we're going to need to ensure the survival of our demographics, not only genetically, but culturally and ideologically. Homogeneity doesn't really benefit a society if it's filled with communists. This would be, in my opinion, one of the strengths of libertarian fascism, securing a free society via collective investment and determination in the preservation of our principles. Whereas modern libertarianism is just about being a suicidal philanthropist, you know? If we just expand the commons and yield open borders to leftists, we'll have a free and peaceful society. Tolerating intolerance is no different than cucking immorality. And valuing the liberty to destroy liberty as equal to the liberty to preserve liberty is no different than surrendering to aggression. Left libertarians and black flag anarchists may not overtly declare an opposition to a free society, but they're pretty damn useless when it comes to pursuing or maintaining one. And if fascists are willing to assist in pushing back against this wave of cultural Marxism that left libertarians are complicit in endorsing, I mean, who am I to deny a soldier his rifle? The right seeks to bring peace to the world through negotiation and cooperation, through trade and mutual benefit, through abstinence and defense, through property. Left seeks to do so through intersectionality and communalism, through aggression and liberation from living standards which inconvenience their moralist crusade, through what can only be described as enslavement. 
Of course, left and right aren't strict boxes which everyone fits perfectly into. Obviously, in life, there are nuances and overlaps. Someone can value traits of one while also valuing traits of the other. So don't give me the, the world is in black and white argument because the intended use of these terms isn't to suggest that it is. The intention is to characterize specific elements of philosophical action. It's time that we admit the truth. The principles of libertarianism, free markets, private property, and self-ownership are not meant to be these, you know, morally relative concepts, you know, or optional. These ethics are non-negotiable. Now, every individual is endowed agency by their nature of being an individual. But if you're unwilling to resolve conflict via mutual respect for the agency of others, then your agency, your individualism, and in turn, your rights are forfeited. And at that point, peace through coexistence is rendered impossible. But that's just me. I mean, this whole thing started off as a fucking troll, but if I'm being honest, I think I might have convinced myself. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section below. Really looking forward to reading that. And also, I'd like to give a huge thanks to my patrons and PayPal donors. You know, I've recently decided to cut AdSense completely from my channel due to its now virtually non-existent income stream. I'd much rather rely on direct donations from my fans, those who enjoy my work, and you know, assist other content creators through purchasing services like YouTube Red. Even the smallest donation of $2 a month, or you know, even 25 cents a month, goes a really long way. And I want all of you guys to know that I really, really appreciate it. And thanks for watching.